You want water, you want steam, not water in your milk. Open the steam one slowly. Let the the heat build slowly. You don't have to you don't have to open all the way. It should sound like paper tearing when you're steaming. And when it gets too hot for my hand, it's pretty much too hot for my mouth. I don't want to burn myself. And always wipe afterwards. The milk should look like wet paint. Pretty much. I like to throw a little bit out when I first pour. And right now I'm gonna start gently incorporating the milk into the espresso. This is my canvas. The paint, the milk is my paint, and the the pitcher is my brush. So for the first design, I made a swan for you guys. It's a little frothy, so I was gonna do something else. I said, let me just do a little swan. You should always have some milk left afterwards too. It's better to have a little bit of milk af afterwards than not have no milk at all. Because the worst thing is when you're making a design and you run out of milk, you can't do nothing else. With the extra milk, I can still do something. And so, pour that out. As Joe makes me another, sh another shot. We chef. I'm gonna pour into this one right here. Go with this one. So is everybody having a good time? Who's is it your first time here? Raise your hands. Oh, there's a lot of you guys. Oh, oh wow. Let's go. That's great. You're in for a treat. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's in my orange bag. Big so, pocket. Like he said, don't drink too much coffee. I made that the mistake <laughs> the first time I came. Like a couple years ago, and I'm just drinking like it like from everywhere. You go this way. Oh. Truly, you want the big cup, yes. right? Yes, Perfect. sir. I'm gonna put some of these cups. I brought cups today. Oh, okay. Yes, let's go. So let me get to my hey. milk ready. Oh, well, usually a drink, depending how the barista, depending on what you're making, it takes about two minutes to make. Oh, so depending on the design, a minute and a half. Because the shot takes about 25 seconds or so. So once again, this is the espresso. See that? Beautiful espresso right there. You want to see tiger stripes. You want to see some bubbles. That makes a big difference how the espresso is. If your espresso is bad, most likely your, la your latte is going to be hard to make coffee or latte art with. So also the amount of milk that you pour into your pitcher. To find that, that, that sweet spot, you got to know your pitcher as well. And also know the mug as well. Because each mug and each pitcher is different sizes. You don't want to have the right, try to find the right amount. So now I'm steaming again. Paper tearing. Now sometimes when I steam, I just listen. I close my eyes and I listen to the sound. That's what I do when I go to coffee shops sometimes. I'm a very hard critic and I get cappuccinos when I go to coffee shops. So when I go there, if I have time, I'll wait to see if somebody orders a cappuccino or a latte. Like that can hear the barista steaming the milk. And if I don't like the sound, I might order a black coffee and become that annoying customer. Let me get some milk on the side from the refrigerator. Let me get three sugars. You know, I really want a cappuccino, to be honest. Because I hate paying for something that's not that good. <laughs> Here we go. So right here, let's go. Slowly incorporate the milk into the espresso. I'm sorry? Oh, I'll do that in a second. Ah, he's playing peekaboo with you eyes. Oh, that's what I see what Atulian, he's saying. Tulian, Tulian, the true artist. He's oh. like, you want to see it? Nah, we got, we got to surprise you later. And in case you recognize this beautiful gentleman, he was pouring all of these amazing designs with our good friends at DeLonghi on the Cross the Way. So, Julian has been here all day and still blessing us. Look at that. Wow. I was wondering why he used to turn your cap around. I was like, okay. <laughs> but I see why, because I'm, I'm blocking the vision. So this is the design I had to make. This is it two for one? 
That's a, a swan and a, and a seahorse together. There we go. The little, little dots on the, uh, around the edges. And it tastes good and looks good and stuff. Anybody has any questions by any chance? Yes, yeah, so you should start with a. You should not start with a hot pitcher. You should never keep your pitcher on top of the machine. Your pitcher should be room temperature or cold. Like that, the milk when you're steaming it, it heats up and you can hold it longer. Because if some people, especially if you're not used to steaming milk all the time, your hand is not resistant to the heat. So that's why one, one thing I like to do in the beginning is to, as it's getting hot, I, I take my finger like this and I take it. I go like this as it get hot. Like that, when the milk, the heat rises, the heat rises, I can hold it longer. Because you should know, you can steam like this, but then you have to be going like this. I, I, I believe you should hold it the whole time. But that's just my technique. Everybody has different techniques. You do what's best for you. And so, no problem. And it should be around 140 degrees. That's how the temperature is desirable, 130, 140 to, for drinking. 150 if you want it hotter, but now as you scorch in the milk, you get to 150, 160 or so. And so. And this is, if you guys are in New York, we're in Midtown. The address is there somewhere. But you can also follow us on Instagram, Freezone Espresso, and the address is there as well. You can watch a show, a theater show, and also watch a show in the coffee shop as well. All baristas, they're all passionate about doing latte art and serving good coffee and great customer service and pastries as well. Any of those big ones, please. Thank you. No. Can we lower the music a little bit, I guess, now? Uh, uh. Ethan, can we lower the music a little bit? Thank you. Love you. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, Frizzone Espresso, um, or or you can do um, New York Coffee Festival as well. And Esam as well. And Espresso State of and Mind. You can check out the YouTube. You can see all the videos, all the, all the highlights of this coffee festival. Yeah. No, we appreciate it. Appreciate you. Sweet. All right. Let's see who guests. Let me put my hat back this time around. <laughs> and stuff. Let's see who guests what I'm going to make next. Now, if you look on top of the machine, you're going to see cups of all different sizes. Is there a right or wrong? No, um, it truly is just what you're more comfortable with. Um, for example, I would never pour into a bowl, but Tulian loves the bigger cups, um, AKA 12 ounce cups, because it one, it allows more space for you to incorporate, um, and honestly just gives you a bigger canvas to actually do the latte art. Ethan, can we get the camera? Bird eye view. I got nothing on TV, sorry. You got that right, whoever said that. You know, I know who that is. Hey, there we go, my guy. So what I'm dropping right now, this is called dry foam. You gotta take your time, even though it's hard to talk and pour. And then I'm gonna, this little last drop, let's see if it falls. Boom, I'm just gonna drop the next one. So whoever said Pegasus got that right. Wow. Let's give it up for Tulia. Look at that beautiful Pegasus thank, right thank there. You, thank you. So there's a thing, a difference in the milk texture as well. When you first pour the milk, when it's like like going really fast, that's pretty much like the wet milk. At the end, like the little teardrops, that's called the the, the foam milk. No, no. The microfoam. Microfoam. The, the dry foam, as well. 
the microphone and all that stuff. That's the, everything makes a difference. How much milk you have? I just had enough just to finish that. Even though I wanted to bi make a bigger sun or moon, but I ran out of milk just slightly. I just I just made it because I didn't toss no milk out. Cause this actually picture, this cup is actually bigger than this one. You can't see it, but this one is an 11, and this is a 13, I believe. Oh wow! So that's a difference. Now th these designs are doable. This is an 8.5, if I'm not mistaken. So you can make these in the smaller ones, but it's a little more technical. You know, I've done it in cortado cups and in a smaller cup as well, but it's more detailed. And so no, you can take off. Yeah, yeah, of course, go for it. Yes. It's always better when it's oval, like round. When it's square, because you want the milk to go underneath. But it's all doable, but it may not come, as, come out as nice and stuff. Like now, I'm going to make one. This is a 6.5. I'm going to make one, one of these. But these, these are the smaller ones are more used for, like, winged tulips or swans or design like that. Not less free pour. You know, you could do free pour. I do them as well, but they don't come out as nice as the bigger ones for me. Any other questions? Yes, my preferred milk is whole milk. But even with whole milk, there's better versions of whole milks. The, the more expensive ones, if you're in New York, like the Organic Valley or the Hudson, Val Hudson or, or this one right here, Van Kill, those are the ones that you see in the shops most. Bank Hill and Hudson Valley. Those are the ones I prefer. But if you use a cheaper brand, it's doable, but it don't, it's not as silky because sometimes the, the sugar content as well. And also if you use skim milk or oat milk, you could do it. I've done latte art with that as well, but it don't come out as nice all the time. It's much hard, it's more cha challenging. But that's why I always say if you're steaming at home, you should always steam water and soap. Because if you can master that, you can master soy milk, oat milk, and, and, and all those non-dairy drinks. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. So now we're going to do, in the 6.5, I'm, I'm going to try to do a wing, wing tulip, which is something that people do. The most, I like can Coffee Fest. I know some people get confused with Coffee Fest and New York Coffee Festival. It sounds very similar, but the Coffee Fest is another, another um, tournament that people compete in. So you see this? Wet paint, that's what you want, nice and silky. This is very, if you can master this, then you can eventually do hearts and stuff. It makes it easier. Pour a little bit out. All right. Here's a wing tulip right here. A little muffin top on top. So this is pretty much a wing right here at the bottom. One, one, three, one. That's what that is, pretty much. The little foamy one. But wing, one, one, three, one. The tulips. I have some, my milk is a little bit too foamy. It should have been more silky. That's another thing. If you're competing, when you're serving, when you're competing, when you're serving, you're going to serve the drink around 130, 140 degrees around there. But when you're competing, you're not going to, milk should be like around 100, 120 or so. So I didn't keep that in mind. I'm thinking I'm, I'm making a drink for myself, and I heat it up too much, so that's why it became a little more foamy. For demonstration, you should, you should steam the milk a little bit less hot. That's what sometimes when some competitors make you a drink, it don't, take a, it don't taste as hot, because probably was sitting out there for a while, but they also didn't steam it as hot. Also, if it was sitting out here as well, like I was saying, but those little details right there. You want to try to clean the canvas. You want to clean the canvas, like if there's any white in it, the way you do it is by, the higher you, you raise your, your pitcher, the higher, 
the mill goes under. The lower, the mill goes over. But that chance, that moment you're raising the pitcher up, that's the time to erase the, the white in the, in the espresso, the white in milk. So you want to try to keep it, make a, a blank slate, blank um, um, canvas and stuff. Let's do another. I got you. Which cup? Uh, let me go with this one right here. Free boy? Actually, let's do this one right here. Sorry. Ooh. Boom. Boom. Let's get it. Another thing you could do, too, if your milk is too foamy, transferring, which I'm going to show you right now what to do, which a lot of baristas do. I like to do that if I have time. Always purge. So I gotta remember not to steam as hot because that is not to serve, it's to show, which is the difference. That's too hot right here. This this is the this one right here is less hot than the other ones I've done. So you see that? The milk and espresso. You, want, you also want to stir the milk like that. The extra foam goes around the edge of the pitcher and throw some out. It's always good to have an extra pitcher depending if you're doing a free pour. So here we go. See there's some white there. I'm cleaning it little by little. You see that? Clean pretty much. Throw some of this. I want some dry foam. You see that? Dry, this is the dry foam I'm looking for. Then I do the same thing over here. I drop it and I drag it. A little snout. Another drop or two. Around the tail, uh, another one here, because I just have dry foam to play with. Nice and even. So and good. It's a little sea, a little seahorse with a tail too. Wow. Mm -hmm. But so, there was no milk. Yeah, thank God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make sure they all dry. So this is a tulip with a seahorse and a little dry foam right there. Voila. Anybody else has more questions? Because now we're gonna play a little game. Who wants to be a who wants to be a barista for the moment? Let's go. I need two contestants. We got one here. We need another challenger. The winner over there. Come Let's on go. up. We're gonna do some latte art. Come up. What is your name? Tarina, nice to meet you, Tarina. <laughs> what is your name? Nice to meet you, Andrea. Have you guys ever poured latte art? No? You, oh, you're, oh, you're cheating now. <laughs> hey, you never know. The good thing about latte art, that like competing, that you don't have to be the best. You just have to be the best against your opponent. That's so th it. That's it. It's like the Super Bowl of latte art. You get one shot to see if you're good enough. Because there ain't anything go wrong. You steam the milk wrong. You pour wrong. Eh, things happen. So there's upsets all the time. So what we're going to do is, you, how's your steaming? Okay, so I'm going to do this. Since you're, you're going to steam your own milk, and I'm going to steam hers. Like that to make it a little more balanced. Oh, any tips? So, well, if you got, were you here from the beginning? You guys were here from the beginning, slightly? So you were, you was? So some of the, pretty much the things that I was saying, you try to, I'm gonna steam the milk for you, so you, you don't have to worry about that. But the, the range, how high, the higher the milk, the pitcher, the milk goes under. 
When you want to make a design, you lower it and it goes to the surface. Okay? But let's see what happens, you know? So we're going to let you go first since you have some experience. What cup would you like to pour in? The red one? And whoever wants to go up next after this, be ready. If you think about it, you know. It's a one, once in a lifetime, one time you could try to be a barista. And one what day. kind of pitcher would you like to use? Mm. Well, that one? Yeah. All right. Choosing the ivy. I like it. Milk will be right there for you, love. We're going to see how much she knows. <laughs> I don't know. She jumped up pretty fast. I bet you she's going to surprise us. Let's yeah. go. Your shot is ready. <laughs> I'm like, who knows me? <laughs> oh, she, I, I feel the confidence. Oh, man. <laughs> see, see, she's holding the pitcher from the bottom. Another technique oh. as well. Reach desire heat. She's tapping it. Oh. <laughs> you. Let's see how she does. She's raising the pitcher up. Now she's taking a break. You want me to hold it for you? Or? Put it lower, the pitcher. Lower it more to get a design. Right there, see how, okay. It's okay, but you see, good job. That's gonna taste good. That's good, now it's your turn. The heart was there. Yeah. The heart was there, well done. The heart was there. I'm a steam What cup does she want? Oh, the same one, I guess. Same one, red. Make it fair, you know. Got you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to assist you, because I got to finish this the first time, for real. Mm. So another thing, I don't know if I can see this, but when the, the express is coming down from the spouts, it should look like a mouse tail. That's how it should like a little thin mouse tail, not gushing out. The same thing when you're pouring the milk out from the pitcher into the espresso, you should try to make it look like a mouse tail close enough. That stream, because if you put too, go too aggressive, then you fill in the, the, the cup too much too fast, and then you wonder why you have no space. Here we go. And once again, you can find the amazing Tulian and his staff at Frizzone Espresso. They have two locations, one on 44th and one on 47th. So once again, there's bubbles right there. Oh, and bubbles right there. I want to tap it, try to get rid of them. Now they're gone. Same thing with this. All right. Are you righty or lefty? Righty. So hold this with your right. Hold this cup like this or so. Face, oh, face me. Go slowly. You want to slant the cup. Slowly. Now we stop. And now we go lower. Then we go up. There you go. A little heart. <laughs> Not bad. Came out great. There you go. Well done, both well our done, competitors ladies. coming up in here. Who's the two next contestants that want to? We got winner, one right there and another one right over there. Come on down. Yes. What is, what is your name? Amadou. Amadou, nice to meet you. You're coming up, yeah, come around, you're gonna pour. Yes, each, each pitcher has different spouts. Each pitcher has a different reason to, for the spout. So, some are for free pour, some are for, lot, uh, for doing wing tulips, some are for or rosettas. So it depends what you feel comfortable with. 
And that's why I have a few, a few of my pictures. These three right here, my three fairy pictures, and they all have, have different um, reasons for using them. Yeah, this is more for free pour. But you could, they could be free pour like doing latte art, like the different designs like this guy right here. But you could also use it for, for rosettas or anything else. I'm sorry? More for wing tulips. The pointy ones are for more for wing tulips. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you, is it, have you poured before? You have poured before? Have you poured before? So Once in a blue. Try. Yeah, tr hey, that's all we could do. Try. All right. So since you poured before, who wants to go first? Uh, <laughs> he let him go first. So you, you want me to steam the milk for you or you got it? Okay. I'm a dude's gonna go first. You want me to take hold that for you? No, yeah, it's right here. Okay, guys, round two of our battle. Uh, what cup would you like to pour in? You like the black one? This is a big size cup, 13 ounces. Is that okay? Maybe the two let's white do, ones. You know, two, what? two let's red ones. Do, two red ones? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, they're two different sizes, by the way. I got another one over here. Perfect. So the size you use for your, your mugs are very important. Like usually, there you go. Uh, for me, a, a cappuccino flat white is between five to eight and a half ounces. Also, and a latte is, for me, nine to 12 ounces. Every other coffee shops, they have different rules. For those in a Cortado or Piccolo, it's about four ounces or so to five. Let's see. Okay, oh, you did that fast. Oh, nice. I feel like we got a ringer here, too. too. Yeah. Let's see what happens. He's, he has definitely steamed the milk before. <laughs> He's swirling it. Perfect. Your shot is all ready whenever you are. And I'm sorry, what's your name? Amadou. Amadou, let's go. I can't wait to see this. We got, we got cheerleaders in the crowd. That's right. <laughs> no pressure. There we go. Oh, he's going for stacks. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Impressive. Wow. Good job. <laughs> it happens. It happens to me. Your turn. Okay, that was beautiful. Okay. I'm here to help. Okay. I'll steam the milk. Yeah. So I'm a do. Absolutely. Perfect. So when you're steaming milk, like I don't know if you caught the beginning, but pretty much when you're steaming milk, the right portion of milk to the cup you're making, you don't want to put the amount of milk for a latte and to steam it for a cappuccino or flat white. Or well, the same thing reverse. So you find the ratio. If this, the cup is seven ounces, and the espresso is about two ounces, you want to put like six ounces of milk because it's in a, depending how you steam it, it's in a raise, another volume, of one, one more volume of milk. Maybe if you put six ounces, it might go to seven, seven and a half. You should have some milk left afterwards. Cortado. Cortado's a little bit harder. So that in that case, you need a smaller pitcher. Pitch smaller than those. Don't steam, I will steam, not, this is not actually a pitcher, but a pitcher like this size for a Cortado, yeah. I want to use the bigger ones because then you have to put more milk because you got to find the angle to put the, the steam wand to get the whirlpool going. All right, let's go no, we're going to do that. We're going to do this size right here. The shot is ready for you. So we're going to go Shot's right here. Ready. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the, pitch, the, the pitcher for you as well. But as you, right here, that cup is at 6.5. I want to, in this case, Badass put milk pour, about there. The well, I'm, I'm going to put like... This, this is a 17 ounce, I believe, but you're not gonna fill it all the way. So I'm putting like five, I'm putting like six ounces of milk. Okay. See, I'm putting it up to that line. Cause th this pitcher has a, a line also inside, which makes it easier to see how much milk you put. A lot of pitchers don't have that, but the slow pour ones do. So like you say, you wanna purge. I like to, so there's a lot of different wands, but they all do. They're not, they're not, they're not brothers, but they're cousins. Okay. But pretty much, 
four quadrants or crosshair. I like to steam in the right bottom quadrant. Okay. I open the, the steam one slowly. You see that? Yep. And I let them. I let the machine do the work. I, I, the machine is mine, so it's gonna, it's gonna steam the milk for me. I don't gotta do no much more. I don't have to open it that much. It's too hot. I tap it. So you're just feeling it to make sure that it's a feel for you. Yes, a feel. You must feel the, the picture, like touch it. No, don't be scared. You hold it. Yeah. You get you. The more you do it, the more you get used to it. And you want to swirl this around yeah. to the microphone to be the core against the walls of the pitcher. Throw a little bit out. And now, you righty or lefty? Righty. Righty. So I recommend if you're righty, you hold it with, with your right hand. Boom. You hold this cup like this or like this, whatever you feel good. And then you face me. Okay. And we tilt this cup this way. We go up, slowly enter the, the, the milk into the cup. You want to clean the white, slowly, then we stop. You stacking. Take your time, nobody's rushing you. Ooh. <laughs> it overspilled, sorry. sorry, that's okay, but still, good job. Oh. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> it's nerve wracking too, you know. We got all these people here watching us. <laughs> but you guys did great. So if you'll take a picture, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, listen, it is never easy coming up in front of strangers um, with the spotlight, new equipment, trying to figure this no out. Problem. So well done to you well two. Well done, guys. Coming out here. Such a pleasure. It takes courage to come up here too. Even I, I compete, and sometimes I get the shakes for some reason. You're very welcome. Nowhere. Our pleasure. Even in the shop, I'm sometimes glad you I'm got pouring for enjoy. customers, and I talk a good game, and I'm like, oh, okay, you're deceiving me today. But that's his part, like, that's part of what happens sometimes. So, Leon, right. you have a five minutes, sir. I'm going to do, for the last drink, I'm going to make the last drink, and this will be the going away drink, I guess. Let's do it. I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. Thank you. Once again, everyone, if you are excited and amazed as much as I am, you are more than happy to go visit Tulian. That's right, Tulian owns Frizzone Espresso with two locations, on one on 44th and one on 47th. So do stop by and get yourself not only a delicious cup of coffee, but a beautiful, delicious cup of coffee. Yes. Um, Tulian? Yes, sir. Perfect. And in case Tulian is not there, do not fret. The rest of the talented, amazing staff will be more than willing to take care of you and make sure your, all your caffeinated needs are taken care of. OK, let's see what I'll do now. So in this case, you can steam and pour at the same time. I hate to tap the espresso. Look at that. Great espresso right there. Swirl it around. Drop the milk slight, slow. It's, nobody's rushing you. Let me see what happens now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So 
I tried to, I wrote swan with two swans. Wow. Am I going away? So, you. so technically, we just witnessed not one, not two, but three, three swans. Well done, Atulian. Thank wow. you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Have a good day. Once again, everybody, shout out to Tulian. Let's give it up for Tulian. Frizz Zone Espresso coming out here and sharing three swans for the win. Winner, winner, chicken, chicken dinner. dinner. <laughs> we are going on break now. We're going to clean up and get ready for the festivities coming up at 145. That is correct. 145. Make. We have our tournament Thank you. coming up. Latte art. First ever battle here at New York Coffee Festival. Hey, oh, yeah. let's get it. Okay. Mm. It's funny. It's like, is he even taking a picture? Is he just <laughs> blinking? Are you just blinking? I know, but I, I don't I don't I don't speak camera, so I just see blinky. I don't understand. I know it's not fake, cause cause you then send us pictures, so I know it's real. But it's just like TMI, TMI. <laughs> 